Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video will be my June wrap up. I read a total of nine books. Three of them were ebooks and six of them were physical books. I had a decent reading month. I did find two new favorite books and I also finally read a five-star read. I feel like it's kind of anticlimactic because I knew I was going to give the book five stars even before I read it, so... I don't feel like it's as exciting as like discovering a random five-star read, um, but regardless, I'm still really happy I finally read and rated a book five stars. The first book I read was Mafia Mistress by Mila Finelli. This I gave two out of five stars. This is a dark mafia romance. It follows Francesca who is set up in an arranged marriage and she is supposed to marry the heir of this Italian mafia king. However, things change when that mafia king himself is interested in Francesca. I found Francesca really annoying, even though like I understood where she was coming from. I understand why she was acting the way that she was, but it just annoyed me. And I didn't really care about Fausto. I think that's his name. Pasto. He also kind of annoyed me. This book definitely had more smut than plot and usually I'm like fine with that but I just wasn't really in the mood for that and I didn't really think that this book had that but it did so there wasn't much of a plot and there is a plot twist in here that I was unfortunately spoiled for so I was just kind of waiting for that to happen the entire book. I did feel like they had chemistry but also at the same time like I just didn't love them as characters so it was hard to be invested in their romance. I was expecting to really love this because I had seen really good ratings from a lot of people, but I don't think I was in the right mood to read this and I just didn't end up loving it. Then I read Every Summer After by Carly Fortune and this I gave three out of five stars. This follows Persephone and Sam who grew up together every summer and they ended up falling in love, but then something happened that ended up separating them and they have not talked for 12 years. And this book takes place in the past and in the present and it shows Percy and Sam like slowly falling in love and then you also see the present where they end up reuniting at Sam's mom's funeral. I'm going to start with the things I enjoyed about this book. I enjoyed the friends to lovers aspects. I enjoyed the Canadianisms in this book. The author is Canadian and I loved all of the little Canadian things that she put in this book. I enjoyed all of the parents in this book, like Sam's mom and Percy's parents. I enjoyed the summer vibes in here and the lake house aspect. You're kind of just waiting for the reveal to happen or like the reason why they didn't speak for several years and that reveal ruined this book for me. I would have given this book four stars if it weren't for the reveal but unfortunately the reveal plot twist whatever you want to call it it ruined it for me. I genuinely feel like Percy should have ended up with somebody else I feel like Sam did not appreciate her or deserve her. I mean, she even says in this book at one point, I just wanted to feel wanted. I feel like Sam never showed that he loved her or that he truly cared for her. And I understand they were teenagers and it's very confusing. And I'm not excusing her actions either, but I just feel like I understand where she was coming from and like why she did what she did. It also just annoyed me that Sam and Percy were like never really honest with each other or never truly confess their feelings until it was like too late. I also really loved Charlie. I thought he was a great character. Uh, he was very immature at times, but I enjoyed him as a character. I also just expected to get this book five stars because I'd heard so many good early reviews, but unfortunately, I didn't love it as much as I had hoped and wished I did. Then I read Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter and this I gave four out of five stars. This is a YA contemporary and it follows Liz who is obsessed with rom-coms and romance 
and she is waiting for her Prince Charming. Her middle school crush ends up moving back to town and she notices that her neighbor and enemy, Wes, is still friends with her middle school crush. So she decides to try to make a deal with Wes to get her middle school crush's attention. This is the first book that I have tabbed. I mentioned this in my mid-year freakout tag, but I've never tabbed any kind of books. I don't annotate books. I really wanted to try this year to annotate my books and just have a little bit more of a personal connection with my books. Unfortunately, I haven't really started, but this is the first book that I have put like sticky notes in, or not sticky notes, um, sticky tabs. I just feel like it is so hard for me to write in my books. I don't want to ruin my books and I know it's like it's mine. I paid for this like it is mine, but for some reason I just feel like writing in it is way too permanent. So I started with the sticky tabs, which I'm very happy that I've started that, but I loved this. I loved Liz and Wes. I loved their enemies to friends to lovers romance. I loved how Wes was truly into Liz from the beginning and you can literally see it from like the first chapter. Liz also lost her mother. Her mother passed away and she is also dealing with like graduating high school and not having her mom be there. Even though that was really sad and heartbreaking to read about, I really enjoyed that aspect of this book. I just loved all of the little like cute scenes between Wes and Liz. I also really love when like Liz realized that she liked Wes. That was great. I don't know. I just really loved this book. I thought it was so cute and exactly what I needed to read at the moment. And this was just like perfect. I absolutely loved this. It's like a new favorite book. Definitely a favorite book of the year. Then I read Good Girl Complex by L. Kennedy. This I had initially given three stars, but the more I thought about it, the more I thought it deserved a two star. This follows Mackenzie who's forced to go to college by her parents, even though she has her own successful business. While attending college, she meets this local guy named Cooper who is kind of a bad boy. He's hot and mysterious, but Mackenzie has a boyfriend. This I filmed a reading vlog for, so I will link that video down below if you want to know more of my thoughts. I will say I don't feel like I fully talked about this book in that vlog. There were definitely more things I wanted to say while I was editing that vlog. This book is very similar to After. There are some differences, but I think for the main plot, it is pretty similar to After. Their relationship was definitely like Hardin and Tessa. When they started dating, their relationship was very toxic. And Mackenzie runs this websites about relationships. It's like girlfriends and boyfriends post about their relationships and like dramas, I guess, in their relationship. The fact that Mac runs this website and she's read some of these entries, she is so clueless about relationships. She was so smart in as like certain aspects, like she has this whole successful business, yet relationship-wise, she's really dumb and she's very gullible and naive but like it doesn't really match up with like her business side if that makes sense. I also feel like it was kind of unrealistic that she was so successful at like 20 and she made all this money and she could afford to buy this hotel and it, it just felt like very exaggerated. I feel like L. Kennedy wrote Mac to be so drastically rich so that Cooper looked so poor to have like this power imbalance and to have it always be inserted in the relationship like Cooper always hating on rich people and them fighting about money and stuff. Obviously you could see the third act breakup coming up like you knew exactly why they were going to break up. I don't know if that was L. Kennedy's intention to make the reader know before the characters did. I also feel like Mackenzie forgave everybody like way too easy. She forgave the girls in the friend group way too easy just because she needed a place to stay. I enjoyed the setting of this book and like the summertime and like the college vibes, but Mac was just so clueless and naive and Cooper was just way too hung up on like rich people and his issues with that. This was just a two-star read. I didn't really enjoy it that much. Then I read Running Wild by K.A. Tucker. This is the third book in the Wild series. I gave this three out of five stars. This follows Mary, who is a veterinarian, 
and she is having the worst luck with relationships. She feels like time is running out as she gets older. New to town is Tyler, who is a competitive dog sled racer. He's very handsome and interesting, but his heart belongs to someone else. I started reading this in the same vlog that I did for Good Girl Complex, but I didn't end up finishing it in that vlog. There were so many things I loved about this book, but ultimately I felt like Mary deserved better. I really loved being back in this world with all these characters. It was nice to see Jonah and Kala together. It was nice to see Mary and her story, and I did love her as a character. I just feel like she deserved better. She deserved somebody who was completely devoted and in love with her. I really enjoyed like the whole sled dog racing aspect. I thought that was really interesting, something I've never read about before. I liked Tyler. I did like him. I just wish his heart was available more because I did feel like Mary and Tyler had chemistry and I did like them together. And it's not to say that Tyler didn't treat her well. I think in some aspects he did, but I just wish that Mary would have been chosen first. I feel like she has always been the second choice and it would have been nice for her to be like the first choice for once. I also started crying at certain scenes. There's this one scene where Mary runs to her car and she's like sobbing and she keeps chanting, I'm happy for them, I'm happy for them, and she's like so sad and heartbroken. Oh my god, I sobbed at that scene. I also feel like I related a lot to Mary in certain aspects, especially with her romantic life, just having issues, and also running out of time. You know, don't want to get too personal, but I can relate a lot to that and getting older and things not working out the way that you thought they would, I guess. One thing I didn't like is how Mary's family always kind of like ganged up on her. That was something I didn't like. I also did love the ending though. I loved the ending and I loved their little inside joke about Mary like ruining the gate. I loved that. I liked this, but also I felt like the romance was a little lackluster for me, but it was still very emotional and heartfelt book. Then I read Lore Olympus Volume 1 by Rachel Smythe. This I gave four out of five stars. This is obviously a graphic novel and it is a Hades and Persephone retelling. I don't feel like I really need to go into detail about this plot. It's just like a Greek mythology retelling. It's kind of in like a modern setting a little bit. The characters are really into like partying and into clubs, very much like the party scene. I enjoyed this. I definitely thought there was going to be a little bit more romance, but I feel like that might be later on in the next couple of volumes. This one does end on kind of a cliffhanger, which was crazy. It made me immediately want to pick up the second one. I already thought the second one was out, but it's coming out this month. I loved the art style in here. It's very bright and vibrant. I love how like every scene basically has any like blue or pink. I really enjoyed Hades being kind of awkward and having this cute little crush on Persephone and him thinking that Persephone doesn't also have a crush on him. It was just really cute but also heavy at some times. I will say trigger warnings for sexual assaults and uh, the R word, but I really enjoyed this and I am very excited to read the next volume and see what happens with Hades and Persephone. Then I read Crashed by Kay Bromberg. This is the third book in the Driven series and this I gave two out of five stars. This was a reread for me and I did actually vlog me rereading this because it is a Passion Flix adaptation. I'll link that video down below. I reread this book and then I watched season three of Driven, which follows this book. I first read this back in 2014 and I gave it three stars, but rereading it now, I just didn't love the characters or the romance. I had no emotional connection to the characters. I felt bad for them. They did go through a lot of traumatic and difficult situations, so I did feel for them, but at the same time, I just 
didn't care. Obviously, this is the third book, so I feel like I can't really say what happens plot-wise. It's kind of like an erotica romance. It follows these two characters that both have very, like, traumatic pasts, and they meet, fall in love, but have a really difficult relationship. Obviously, they both have specific habits, especially Colton. He is very much like a playboy, but Riley helps him with a lot of things and he definitely changes. I will say they both do have fantastic character growth and it was nice to see them finally happy and I am really glad I did reread this and watch season three of Driven. I just didn't love this series as much as I remember enjoying it back in the day. Then I read my five-star read, which was From Lukoff with Love by Mariana Zapata. This falls Jasmine, who is struggling to keep her figure skating dreams alive until Ivan Lukoff has an offer for her that could change everything. Obviously, I really, really loved this. I loved Ivan and Jasmine together, and I loved them separately as characters. I don't think I've ever read a romance book about figure skating. I've just read about hockey players. So I enjoyed the figure skating aspect of this book. I thought it was very interesting. It was also very intense to read about them training and practicing. And Jasmine was like very motivated and very strong. She just literally fought for her dreams, which I really enjoyed reading about. I really admired her for that. She truly never gave up on her dreams and she always always fought for them. I enjoyed Jasmine's family, although I did feel like it was kind of overwhelming to read about all of them at once. Ivan and Jasmine had a hate to love relationship. They really did not get along. They constantly bantered a lot and were constantly like bickering and fighting. It was nice to see that slowly change. Jasmine was very stubborn, so she was always kind of arguing and fighting on things. There were also so many little scenes that I really loved, like Ivan with his pets and when he like holds Jasmine's niece or nephew for the first time. That was like so cute. I loved that scene and that conversation. I also loved like the little things that Ivan did for Jasmine, like getting her like chocolates and a bracelet and I don't know, there were just so many little things that I loved about this book that I could probably make like a whole video talking about everything that I loved about it. I also felt bad for Jasmine feeling like she was nobody's favorite. Like in her family, she felt that she was like the least loved, even though I feel like her mom and the rest of her siblings kind of gave up a lot for her to pursue her career and her dreams. I also loved... Ivan's love confession and everything that he said. I absolutely loved all of that and it was just so beautiful. I literally want to like write down, I mean I wrote it in my life journal. I did like a spread for the book and I wrote like his entire love confession. Yeah, I just, I really, really enjoyed this book. It was so good and I'm so glad I finally read it. And then the last book I read in June was By Sin I Rise Part 1 by Cora Riley. This is the first book in the Sins of the Father series. This I gave three out of five stars. This follows Maddox who is part of a motorcycle club and he is determined to get revenge on the Vitiello family for murdering his father and other men of the club when he was a child. And his club ends up deciding to kidnap Marcella, who is the daughter of the Chapo. I enjoyed this, but I feel like the ending kind of ruined it for me. I also feel like Marcella was an okay character. I understand how she wanted to know more about the family business, but obviously she is a female in the family and females don't really do any mob business. She was trying too hard to be like this tough, like, oh, I want to be a mafia queen. I want to run the mafia business. I felt like it, she was trying too hard, essentially, uh, which I did not enjoy. I didn't feel like it was natural and like organic for her to like want to be a part of the family business. I enjoyed their romance, Maddox and Marcella. I did enjoy their romance and I liked how they fell in love, but I don't like the ending. The way that like Marcella essentially like made this deal with Maddox and like not really forced him to do something, but I feel like 
that was kind of out of nowhere. And they were talking about like, oh, if you really love me, you'll do this for me. And I was like, girl, what are you talking about? Like he doesn't really know you that well. But I did like the romance and I liked the whole like kidnapping aspect in this book. But that was like the only two things that I enjoyed about it, to be honest. I will read the next book and continue this series because this first book did end on a cliffhanger. But so far, I'm not super impressed with the series. So that is it for my June wrap up. Let me know if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them or let me know what books you read in June and which one was your favorite. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, follow me on all my other social media, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!